Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to Dubious Engineering. <laughs> Check it out. Yes, indeed. It's an old BBC Micro Model B, and it's been an absolute labour of love recapping the power supply, figuring out what's wrong with it, getting it up and running again. And hopefully at the end, we've even made some nice little modifications to it, which is going to give it the ability to be able to load various different bits of software without using a tape deck or old floppy disk drives, giving this BBC Micro an absolute new lease of life and then it can go back to its original owner and I'll be happy in the knowledge that this machine will carry on working for many, many years to come and offering all of the pleasure that the old BBC 6502 systems did all those years ago. So follow me on my interesting journey pulling apart this BBC Micro and getting it all back up and running again. Please don't hesitate to give us a good old thumbs up. Make sure you've subscribed if you haven't already for more of this kind of lovely madness. And we'll see you in the next video. Here it is then, the BBC Model B microcomputer. 6502 processor with a whole 32K of RAM. And it's been given to me by the Honey Monster. He's not called the Honey Monster because he's large and ginger, but uh, he clearly likes to play elite. He's called the Honey Monster, something to do with his second name. He asked me if I could go ahead and have a look at this bad boy. First things first, let's get it apart and see what's going on. Clearly this has been hacked about before at some point. There's a problem with the keyboard, or there was. <laughs> and uh, also the cabling in here uh, for the uh, plus five, minus five and zero volt supply side is an absolute nightmare with tape all over it. And yeah, it's really quite shoddy. So we're gonna have to get into that and we're gonna have to rewire all of that. I can't believe there's even open connections hanging around on the board there as well with no insulation on them. So let's spin this bad boy over, start pulling the power supply out of it. The first mission here is to recap the power supply. These power supplies are notorious for going bang and creating a lot of smoke. It's the capacitors on these power supplies, the X2 capacitors that normally tend to fail. So, on eBay, for not too much money, you can find replacement capacitor kits for the BBC power supply. And that suits pretty much most of the BBC models, Masters and the Model Bs. Power supply is a bit of a fiddle to get into. There's a metal shell around the outside of it. There are a lot of nuts and bolts to undo before you can actually pull the circuit board out of its housing. But once you get the circuit board out of its housing, it's not too hard to work on. There are plenty of cable ties to cut, nuts, bolts and washers to remove, and also spade connectors to get the mains cable disconnected from the switch mechanism. Once you've done all of that, you should be able to slide that PCB sideways outside of the metal housing, which then gives you access to the front and rear of the PCB. So first thing to do, is find the two X2 capacitors on the, on the PCB. Go ahead and remove those capacitors. And it should be relatively easy. These are reefer, reefer, reefer or reefer capacitors. And as you can see here, I've got an old one that has a bit of a split that seems to have developed down the side of it. So clearly that's expanding. It was gonna go bang at some point in the very near future. And uh, that's the 10 nanofarad flavoured capacitor. So we're going to go ahead and replace that one first. Slam in the new one. And then we've got another reefer capacitor re to replace. And this guy here is in pretty much the same condition as you can see there. The, the outer varnish coating seems to be splitting and degrading pretty quickly. So this is the new reefer capacitator and that bad boy is going to go in its place. 
And that should stop things from going bang. Now, uh, there is also a little electrolytic capacitator that's worth changing out as well. And that, I think, is a 330 microfarad device, which is quite close to the mains transformer there. So let's go ahead and whip that bad boy out. And once that's out, you can then go ahead and replace it with the new dude. This will give you a nice, reliable power supply. And the power supply produces plus 5 volts, minus 5 volts, and 0 volts. The minus 5 volts is used for the same chip. And the plus 5 volts and, and 0 volts are used for all of the rest of the chips on the motherboard. Now, one other thing that you might want to consider doing, the mains cable for the BBC is quite thin and spindly and actually it degrades pretty badly as well and starts cracking so i've gone ahead and replaced that with a nice big fat mains cable and uh and I, another thing that you need to consider when you're doing this certainly if you're going to do any testing on this is that you have got 240 volts running through this power supply so let's switch it on and let's get a multimeter and let's be careful not to touch anything on that power supply whilst it's switched on. But yeah, it looks like the power supply is all up and running. So the next thing we should probably do whilst we've got the BBC open is just check that all of the ICs that are in sockets are firmly seated on the motherboard. Be careful here, don't push too hard, but at the same time, you need to make sure that these guys are definitely in place. So let's go ahead and fit the mains power supply back in place. And then we need to figure out that what used to be rat's nest of cabling. Oh my goodness. I can't believe it was in this bad shape. The wires are literally just twisted together and chucked in there. No wonder this poor BBC was having problems. Let's try and remind ourselves where these uh, positive cables go. And next to the positive cables are the zero volt cables as well. So what I've decided to do is actually solder these joints and then use a little bit of heat shrink sleeving in order to make sure that any floating soldered joints don't accidentally touch any of the other bits of electronics inside this BBC Micro. So there we have it, a lovely connected cable. And let's get all of these bad boys soldered up and fitted in place. then it certainly makes sense to do a little bit of cable routing, tidy things up and make things look beautiful. As we can see, just below those, that big batch of cables there is one of the disk filing system chips. So I do recall that the keyboard had a little bit of a problem. So I'm gonna go ahead and just tweak that keyboard connector. So I'm just adding a little bit of extra cable to that keyboard connector and then highlighting where that was, just so that if anybody else has a problem with the keyboard in the future, they can see quite clearly that it's been modified. Right, so the moment of truth. <laughs> Let's put everything back together, plug it in, and keep our fingers crossed. What will happen? Well, that's not good news. A continuous tone like that means that there's normally a serious problem somewhere with the main motherboard of the, of the BBC. Hey up people, right we're back with the BBC here trying to fault find this bad boy. Remember the situation is turn it on you get a couple of lights on the front of it and uh, it just makes a continuous noise rather than going do you did like it should do. Now if we put a scope probe on the clock. Look at that. We have got one, two, three, four hundred millivolts there of 
25 nanoseconds so that's about 50 nanoseconds actually because it's uh, two divisions sorry about the noise I'll unplug the speaker at some point right <laughs> so it looks like the clock's running uh, now we need to start doing a little bit of tracing and see if we can figure out what is going on with this bad boy so the good news I've got a spare 6502 here and a couple of old Acorn Electron PCBs and you never know we might be able to salvage enough components out of those to get this bad boy up and running again <laughs> I think I got it. <laughs> I just pulled this chip out here. It's one of the ROMs that was sitting down here. And guess what happens now? Yes! That sounds far better. Um, I think we need to plug this into some kind of a monitor. Okay, you ready for this? <laughs> so I've bodged up uh, an RF modulator cable out of an old phono plug and a bit of TV coax. <laughs> Look at that! That is a BBC Model B running. Epic, epic news. What can we do? Well, we can type stuff, but we can't type H. There's a problem with that H key. So, need to uh, need to get a little bit of switch cleaner on that. I think that was the guy that was soldered. So, a uh, little bit of investigation work on the keyboard. Other than that, it's looking really promising. Our problem with the keyboard isn't just the H key. It would appear as though the H, B and Y don't work. So there's a common line there that looks as though it's got a problem. So I'm going to have to get the meter out and do a little bit of fault finding. There you go. K works fine. J works fine. H doesn't work. B doesn't work and Y doesn't work. Six and seven do, no problems. So it's those three, Y, H and B. So clearly there's a common signal that's uh, got a problem there. Clearly I hadn't done a very good job of sorting this uh, solder joint out here. So uh, this side of the joint was dry. So I've got to go ahead and re-solder that. As soon as I've done that, we should have a fully working keyboard. And then, <laughs> We can start goofing around. <laughs> slaving over. There's nothing like slaving over a hot soldering iron and a BBC micro and an old monitor. Well, actually, it's an old TV. Proper analog TV as well. Nice. Right, I'm going to need my glasses for this. Can't see what I'm doing. Oh, it's better. Right. Let's give it a try. Oof. Yes! Hello! Excellent! Good, so, QWERT, just check all the keys while we're here. I love the sound of these keyboards. Lovely. It's like it's almost like an old typewriter, you know. <laughs> right, uh, ten. Go to no ten. Go to twenty. <laughs> Dumbass. Ten. Print. Quotes. Hello, world semicolon oh let's put a space in there hello world space quotes semicolon means it will print it after it rather than go to a new line 20 go to 10 and now all I've got to do is type run <laughs> I'll bring you around to see the screen let's type run R U N and enter. Oh, ho, ho. there we go. Right, if I press the brake button, ah, it just killed it. I thought it might uh, stop the program. Actually, if I run again, oh no, there's no program loaded in now. Okay, anyway, cool. This looks like it's all working. Happy days. I'm quite pleased. 
my workshop is a mess all of a sudden. <laughs> well, it's always a mess, but uh, good. We've got this BBC Micro working. So the culprit, the reason why this BBC wasn't working is this little ROM here. It lived in this ROM chip location just there and it stopped the entire system from booting. In fact, just to prove it to myself, I'm going to pop it back in. turn on the system and there it is exactly the same problem so the problem is repeatable something wrong with that ROM chip thankfully this BBC doesn't need that ROM chip to run so <laughs> I'm gonna screwdriver it back out of its socket and then we're gonna have some fun playing with the BBC so Having gotten this far into the project, the Honey Monster has now asked me if I can put some kind of card reader into the BBC so that he can have his software ready to go at a moment's notice without having to press play on a tape and wait for a tape to load or connect disk drives to it. So this is the end of part one. We're going to have a part two, and part two will be installing that drive system and then testing out some of the software that's available to us and having a bit of fun. Thanks ever so much for watching. As always, please give us a good old thumbs up. Make sure you've subscribed if you haven't already. Tell your friends, and we'll see you in the next video. Cheers and beers, people. Bye for now.